98 or 99 percent is good enough yeah right let's let's i tell this to my officials when they say like the ball should be here and you put it here like it's an inch in the wrong spot and my answer is let's not be that good Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 136. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. We're on a couch. We're actually on a couch. For Keto on the Couch. For Keto on the Couch. I love it. Yeah, we, we've got a bunch of new subscribers, so welcome to all of you. I think there's like 2,500 new subscribers in the last welcome. 30 days. Thanks so much. But we've got a lot of messages from people like, I don't understand, why is Keto on the Couch not, couch. you're not on a couch. So when we got started with Keto on the Couch, we came up with this idea, let's do something where we talk about our week and celebrate our subscribers. And if you're new to us, that is what Keto on the Couch is. It's about celebrating our subscribers, answering questions and comments from our Facebook group, as well as from last week's Keto on the Couch, and also picking out people who share their stories, because it's so important to share your stories, but we'll talk about it in a minute. When we started, we were on a couch. Yeah. Then the big C word happened. Right. We shifted to our studio. And Cottage I was like, cheese, obviously. This is like much easier because I can have my computer. Cauliflower And rice. I can hit a button and put like the comments up on the screen. And my software does a lot of the work for me. And I'm Coco like, Chanel. I want to stay here. The C. The C the, thing. The C thing. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Starts with a C, ends with a D. Put everybody in their house for a year. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's, we shifted away from being on the couch. We were doing it live. And then I just, I th it was easier for editing because Keto on the Couch takes like forever. It's between filming it, editing it, previewing it, uploading. It's like an eight hour ordeal. So anything to make it easier. I'm all in. But we're actually on a couch today. Yeah, this is so awesome. We are enjoying beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. You're going to sing Luck Be a Lady? Luck Be a Lady tonight. I love when you sing. Here's the thing. Luck, don't be this lady. <laughs> right? You won. At slot machines. Five cents. You you We're won still that, down. But you won. We did. I did. I won, but I would. I really won because I'm smart enough to cash out when I am ahead. Joe is down four dollars, yo. Four dot one two three four. Well, I bet four dollars and I lost four dollars. Yes. We're not gamblers. We're not. We, we, we may, if we have time, go play bingo. I would love I to love play bingo. Because we found one place. It's like thirty bucks, but it's like two and a half hours, and it's like that's a date, right? A thirty dollars a piece, chance to win some money, and we hang out for two and a half hours, and there was no smoking in there. I noticed, which so was amazing. That's like yes. Yeah. So we're enjoying Las Vegas, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs in Las Vegas. It's is, possible. Is, is it easy? No. no. Is it possible? Yes. So I can tell you, we found, you'll see it in that video, I'll put up here from day 25, we found that fat burger and that was delicious and Wonderful. it was filling. And we spent like 21 or $22 and for both of us combined. Then we went out to Fogo de Chao. Right. That was expensive, it was. but it was filling. But when you look at the price of the stuff inside of the different hotels, it wasn't that much money. Well, and I think if normally, if somebody is coming here, unless they live close by, like they live in the Nevada area, you're you're coming to Vegas because you're celebrating something. It's your birthday or right. you're, you know, you're you're having a honeymoon. And so you're ready to to spend money on a fancy meal. So right. Finding Fogo de Chao was like a great fancy meal. In, in the end, when you compare it to the cost of just a regular meal in a lot of these casinos, one of that's a saw, discount. We saw an advertisement for one of the hotel steakhouses and it was like dinner for two, only $255 
per person. And that was just for like a, di a steak dinner. It wasn't like an all you can eat. No. One of the places has a breakfast buffet, very famous breakfast. $35 for breakfast. Wow, that's going to be a lot of What eggs. am I going to eat for $35 for breakfast? Yeah, especially when you're thinking like even the $6 eggs. Bacon, eggs. bacon, sausage, maybe that's about it. That's a lot. Yeah. Now, Today we went to Buffalo Wild Wings with some people and of course we couldn't eat wings. No. And only because of beef, butter, bacon, egg. Nothing wrong no. with Buffalo Wild Wings. Just on this challenge. If you actually, if you're a wing lover, Buffalo Wild Wings is the best place to go because they are the only wing place that I know of that fries their wings in tallow, which is so much better than peanut oil or corn oil or canola oil or any of those bad oils. So they fry it in tallow. Now, one thing to be aware, we actually have a whole video on ordering on how to order at Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm going to leave a link for it. We have a whole blog post and everything the about guide. the best thing to order. Here's a good guide. Do be aware that all of their seasonings, the dry seasonings, do have a little bit of maltodextrin. So one of our hacks that we actually started doing before this challenge was getting the plain ones. We bring them home. And then we sprinkle the pork and good seasonings on which they're actually yeah, here. Yeah, they're actually here at the show. It was so exciting because it was fresh in our minds. Right. At, from, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings. And we saw them, we're like, oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. we have to let you know, you're the perfect seasoning And they have really good flavors. And you can put them on the wings and there's no maltodextrin. Now, we are not affiliated with them other than no. the fact that we really love them. And when we found them, we said, hey, can we at least have a coupon code for our subscribers since you're not in stores? So if you use the code 2 Crazy Ketos for them, you're going to get 10% off. We don't make any money. We're not no. looking to make any money. But we just they're like a company it. that stands behind their product with good quality ingredients. So we always like to shout that kind of stuff out. Yeah. But we went and we had burgers and at Buffalo Wild Wings. And we each got their brisket burger, which did not have any sauce. It was two patties with a brisket, with bri a lit, and it was a little bit of brisket, a little, a bit. little bit of brisket. It was like a spoonful of and brisket. And I knew it was going to be a lot of food, so I'm like, "Can you give me an extra patty?" Which, now looking back, the extra patty was two dollars. The burger was eighteen, and we're throwing out the lettuce, the tomato, the bun, and all that. The patty was two dollars. I wonder if they would have just done a bunch of patties for me, looking back. But they charged us two dollars for an Worth extra patty. An ass, right? And then I said, I'd like a side of bacon with it. Another $2 for the bacon. So for us to each get three patties with, I mean, a spoonful of brisket. And when I say a spoon, like maybe a tablespoon of brisket. It was an homage to and barbecue. And two pieces of bacon. $52. I am ready to go back to Fat Burger. Because I that was half the price for twice the food. But in Buffalo Wild Wings defense... They ain't supposed to be a burger place. They're a wing place. They They've they got, sell burgers, but they're a wing place. It's like they have value for chicken wings. Right. So we go there on Thursdays. That's Tuesdays. like or Tuesdays rather. That's their like deal day, mm -hmm. and and you get a good deal on good wings. But it's kind of like when you go to a seafood place and you're a land lover and you're like, yeah, I'd like a hamburger. Well, you're gonna pay way extra for it, and it's not gonna be nearly as good because they're a seafood place. Yeah. Now. Like I said, is it possible to do beef, butter, bacon, and eggs here in Vegas? Yeah. Yes, we're doing it. Is it easier if you're just keto or just carnivore? Absolutely. Yeah, because I think you're going to get a better value. For us, it's been like, oh my gosh, I'm going to spend $30. I'm going to throw out the lettuce and the cheese. And, and like in the end, I don't feel like I'm getting my value. And we're all about value. But we're showing it is possible. What is becoming a very difficult task is being here at the conference because there's some products I really want to try, yes. like the Kehoe bars, which we've never tried. I'm gonna, we're gonna just buy a box of them and bring them home and review. Um, your favorite, which I actually bought 12 tins of them, but I'm hiding them from you. Okay, is ice chips with every single flavor here. I love them. Now, so I bought, I bought 12 tins. You also have to hide deal. them from Tabitha. Yes, because there's xylitol in them. But they are really good. But of course, he's like, do you want to try some of these flavors? I'm like, I can't. can't I really it. want to. Um, Just Made Keto is here. Oh, and right? she has and beautiful. And new flavors that we want to try. And again, we're not affiliates out. of them. We just really like her. We like her mission. We like the ingredients they have. I think they are the best 
keto baked goods that I have ever tried. The frosting alone is it's worth butter. a look at. It's delicious. The blend that she uses, both the chocolate, the chocolate is amazing. Mm -hmm. Everyone that I know, keto or not, they try it. They don't even realize that it's keto right. icing. But even if you're doing your own baked goods, keto baked goods, and you just want to add a frosting, she makes it really you know, easy. If we were allowed to have sweetener, we could be eating that icing right now. Cause it's literally you can butter put it right in your coffee. It's so good. Blend it up. But we have a coupon code for them. It's two crazy ketos. That gets you some money. I don't remember how much because again, we're not affiliates with them. We just asked her for a coupon code to share with you guys. Yeah. But yeah, so it's hard to not try any of the snacks it's that are here. Out there. And I mean, Nush Cakes is here. Oh, I mean, so. I love them. But we're showing it's possible. We're really having a good time. We're getting to catch up with some friends. I just realized you're on the wrong side. Sorry. You for everyone I've thrown off by this. I started to sit over there and I thought, no, I'm on the wrong side, right? No, you're on the wrong side. I'm on now. the wrong side. Yeah. I'm sorry. But we're having a blast. Um, we're supposed to go out for a steak dinner tonight. And then uh, tomorrow, I don't know. What we Oh, we think we found one breakfast buffet that's like $15. We may go check out. That was at Paris. That gets oh, into Paris that's plate. right. Yeah. And then we're going to see how things go. I'm excited. We're going to be going camping on Monday. So... If you're watching this when this premieres on Monday at we're 10 a.m., we're not there. We're not going to probably be in the premiere because, from what I understand, maybe we're going to luck out, but from what I understand, there's no cell service where we're going to be camping. So, we probably aren't going to be in the premiere, but we're going to still leave it as an open premiere and let you guys chat amongst yourselves while the video is premiering. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to be camping with no internet, which I think is going to be good for us. It's going to be nice to while, not be connected. But what I'm a little bit afraid of is we're supposed to try water skiing. You're going to be fine. You think I'm going to be okay? I think you're going to be fine. Well, what upsets me though a little bit is you're going to have your camera still. Oh, I'm going to launch the We're drone. We're unplugged from the internet, but that doesn't mean that if I fall on my face, you're not going to have recorded evidence. Everybody wants to see that. You know what they don't want to see? What? Is me fall on my face. Oh, I think they want to <laughs> see that too. I don't think so. You know what? Let's do this. We've got to try to get this video edited and uploaded by tomorrow because we're leaving at like 8 a.m. So we got to make sure everything's done. So let's jump right into our comments. We're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come back with our subscriber of the week, our adjunct professor of the week, and all of the comments. How's your Monday going? My Monday is pretty good because I'm going to be watching you jump off and fall off a of water ski. I'm sleeping in a tent right now. <laughs> okay, let's get right into it with our Keto College Adjunct Professor Week. I'm gonna apologize real quick because, again, not being in our normal setup, I've got my computer down here right. to read comments, so I'm gonna be looking down, so I'm not trying to ignore you, just that's where my computer is. So Keto College Adjunct Professor Week, this is somebody who put a post in our Facebook family group, which we find very inspirational. Now, if you're not a member, of our Facebook family group, go ahead and join. There is a link down below there. Uh, there's, I don't even know how many people at this point, 10,000 people Nearly 10,000. We also, if if Facebook's not your thing, we also have a MeWe family group if you'd like to put your story in there too. And you can also send us an email at stories at twocrazyketos.com. But this is a post that we found very inspirational, and this week's is from Marjorie. Hey, Marjorie. Marjorie said, every step counts on the journey, so don't discount the small ones. And she put up this little meme. It says, small step, small step, plus small step, plus small step, equals big results. Exactly. I think sometimes in our mind, we're just thinking starting line of my health goals, finish line of my health goals, and the frustrating part in the middle. But well, it's every step. Well, the thing is, is that the other day, Coach Bronson did a Zoom call with our Patreons and our upper channel members. And it was really awesome. And somebody asked a question of how do I get going if I just can't find the motivation to move? And we, first of all, I want to say thank you to Bronson yes. for taking the time to jump in with our Patreons. So the second Tuesday of every month, he is going to do what's supposed to be a 30 minute coaching call, but I think he extended it like to almost an hour. Yeah, it was wonderful. And just helping you guys because his heart is, he just wants to get everybody moving because moving is so important, yeah. especially for our longevity. So the person had asked, I can't get motivated to get moving, so what should I do? And he had this great, he's like, we're gonna take baby steps. I want you to just 
get up in the morning and drive to the gym and stay there for 15 minutes. You don't have to get out of your car. Just sit in the parking lot of the gym. Now, why are we doing this? It's a baby step yeah, because now you're going to start setting this routine. Well, I'm gonna get up in the morning, I'm gonna get dressed and I'm gonna go to the gym. And he was like, maybe after you do that for a week, you get out of your car and you go to the front door. Yeah, and we're seeing that happen. We're seeing right? people giving it a try and are already at the point where, you know what, I'm doing a little bit of workout right there by my car. Mm -hmm. And then I go home and they know that they're getting closer and closer to taking the full advantage of the gym and all of the fitness areas that they can use but it becomes a habit when you actually get out the door but it takes that getting out the door but the whole point is it's baby steps one step at a time we always ask how, how do we get fat one, one step at a time one meal at a time and give yourself grace you know we we mention it all the time we want instantaneous results. Like I need to lose a hundred pounds in the last three months. Well, did you gain a hundred pounds in three months? No. Give yourself at least as long as it took you. Actually, I would say double. If it took you a year to put the weight on, give yourself two years to take it off because we know it's harder to take it off than put it on. Exactly. Right? Okay. Let's get into our subscriber of the week. Now we actually have a couple of them this week. Now, these are people who have put up their stories and we ask you, please, 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 please share your stories. We are not asking you to share your story for our content. We're asking you to share your story because your story is going to impact somebody. They really will. There is somebody out there right now that is all alone. They think they nobody else in the world knows what they're going through. They think nobody else in the world has a 13.2 A1C, that nobody else in the world is on arthritis medication and can't afford it anymore. Nobody else in the world is struggling with diabetes. But when you put up your story, how your A1C has gone down, or you're feeling better, or you're climbing steps that you couldn't climb before, they're gonna be like, oh, somebody else gets me. Well, if they can do it, then I can do it. And that's why it's so important to share your story. I was talking to somebody um, here at the conference and it was so wonderful, their perspective. So they were letting me know that they are gonna be sharing their story and they are crafting it. They wanna really think about it and write every single thing down because they don't even want to leave out the medications that they've been on because they're like, hey, maybe somebody has the same situation that I have medical, but they're, they're thinking, well, you're not on the same medicine I'm on. Right. And when they hear the medicine I was on, then maybe that's the moment of connection for them. And I thought that is so, so powerful. Right. So please share your story. You can share it on our Facebook group. You can email it to us and make, again, email it at stories at twocrazyketos.com. And it doesn't matter if you are a day in, a week in, a year in, or a five years in or 10 yes. years in, share your story. It is so, so important. The first subscriber of the week this week is Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Hannah said, Two Crazy Ketos family, finding your channel group has been so uplifting for me. I suffered from anorexia when I was younger, and that led to major hangups around food and unhealthy patterns of eating and thinking. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at the beginning of June this year when I went uh, into the hospital with an A1C of 15.8. Wow. They didn't know if I would make it through the night. I never knew I was diabetic before that day. I was so grateful to have survived that I changed my way of eating so soon as I realized uh, from the ho as I was released from the hospital. Since then, I've never I've had normal blood glucose for the last four months, wow. and my medication and insulin free. I have energy that I never knew I could have, and I currently have an A one C. Are you ready? Okay. Five point eight. What? Way 15. to 15.8 to 5.8. Oh my amazing. gosh. And Dr. Mary said there's no medication that does that, no. right? She said, I've lost 50 pounds and I continue, I've chosen to continue this journey as my new forever lifestyle. I love that, Hannah. I tend to be uh, very hard on myself, so finding your channel was a light for me. Your positive, encouraging content has filled me with joy and strength. Thank you for letting me be a part of this Two Crazy Ketos family. P.S. I just got my 2KK flask named Skip. Skip. Ready? Because I decided to skip any negativity wow. and appreciate every moment from now on. Are you Hannah. ready for this? Look down and take a look at this. Oh, Hannah. Oh, my gracious. 
That is so wonderful. Don't you look beautiful? Isn't that amazing? Just absolutely beautiful. And what an amazing testimony with that A1C. Yeah, that is that, amazing. That is going to speak into many people's situations who have a high number like that and they're thinking there's no way we can turn it around once it gets like this. Now, I want to tell you, Hannah, that post is going to inspire so many people. Yes. It's going to motivate so many people. But that post also motivates us. There is a little bit of selfishness when we ask you to share your stories. We said we don't want it for content, but the reason that we want to see your stories, and this is to everybody out there, is your stories motivate us. You motivate us to keep on this lifestyle. You motivate us to keep on this mission. Yeah. There are days where we go, do we make a difference? Why should we keep doing this? Does anybody really care? And when you guys share your stories, it keeps us going because we are on a mission to change the world along with all of these other speakers that are here, the Bronson and you know Chris and Miriam and Abby from House of Keto and Autumn, they're on a mission. Yeah. And we're going to change the world one person at a time. So please, please, please share your story. Also, I wanted to mention, we were talking to Logan Delgado, Goody Beats. So they have a brand new product and, and we're gonna be reviewing it. And I'm excited about this I am product. Too. And, and he actually, it came around with, with his mom as well. And I was one of these people. She said, I didn't know that I was even diabetic. I didn't know where my A1C was. And I've been in that boat. I didn't know. I don't know what my numbers were pre-keto. You know why? I was afraid why? to know. I was afraid to know. And I was, my thing was, if I don't know, I don't have it. If I don't go to the doctor and have a doctor tell me I'm diabetic. I don't have to deal with it. I won't have to deal with it. Do I think I was diabetic or at least pre-diabetic? Absolutely. It's just like the scale. I'm pretty sure that scale was over 300, but if I didn't get on it, I can still say I was 285, yeah. right? And that's what happens with people with their A1C. They don't want to know because if they know, they have to deal with it. So, and they're afraid to go to their doctor because you got to go through all of the embarrassment they and all the work and at. the cost and being, I don't like to go to the dentist because the dentist is going to yell at me. You have bad teeth. I know I have bad teeth. I don't need you to tell me that. Can you just fix it for me without yeah. ridiculing me? Well, they've come up with something awesome at Keto Coach and it's an at home A1C meter. Which is amazing. And we are going to be testing it against Actual our labs actual A1C labs that we're that we're getting back, so we will be able to see like, are we getting the same results whether we are taking it at home or taking it at lab? And I feel like that is the real test of it, you know, to see are we getting the same number. So I'm gonna put a link for that meter down below. But I'm super super excited about this because now somebody who may be in your situation where like I didn't go to the doctor and I didn't know. We can test in the privacy of our own home and then do something about it. Because even like when we were talking to Logan last night, he's like, here's the problem. You want to do something about it. You want to know where you're starting and you go to the doctor. But now once you go to the doctor, guess what? Bang, that's in your permanent record. Exactly. So now we can find out what is our A1C at home and we can fix it at home with our diet. Because again, we are not doctors or medical professionals or nurses or anything like that. But I truly believe, and a lot of you guys are proving this, that we can reverse and get under control our diabetes through diet and diet alone. So we have one more subscriber of the week and this one is Sue. Hey Sue. Sue said, hello everyone. I had gastric on October 28th of 2019. Long journey since then. I got another 35 to 45, 40 pounds to go and it's gotten really hard. Gastric did help, but without me following 2KK and Dr. Aww. Barry, I would not have made any progression. Wow, Sue. You guys are amazing, and thank you for your contribution. I am doing the BBBE challenge, and it is not easy, but I feel I have accomplished because my son has tagged along for the challenge. Oh, how wonderful. And in three weeks, he has lost 15 pounds, and I have lost about 13. Sue, I am so incredibly proud of you. That is awesome. Do you want to see her picture? Yes, I do. Sue, look how gorgeous. Oh my goodness, girl. Wow. Hot stuff. Oh my goodness. That is incredible. And I'm so glad that we can help you 
with what was formerly a plateau and we feel that oh absolutely man to see things going on and being able to wear jeans that i couldn't wear two years ago just after a couple of weeks of doing this i mean it's been two years of frustration right and then you've got like a couple of weeks of like wow something is actually happening again it's so exciting it's very motivating Let's jump into the comments from last week's YouTube. We're going to start off with Gene, hey, Gene, who happens to be here in Las Vegas right now. We were just hanging out with him. I can see your car from here. He said, Pat's post last week was exactly what I needed today. Yesterday was a bad day for me. I ate too much and I didn't exercise at all. Today, I was a pound up. So I had my keto chop for breakfast. I grabbed my Relite and got on my bike and rode 8.07 wow. miles. Wow. Feel great and ready to stay focused. Man, I am so glad you shared that, Gene. That's awesome. And it's just so neat getting to meet him in person mm -hmm. because there is something really special of having that connection. So I'm so thankful for these meetups mm -hmm. where we can actually see one another, talk to one another, face to face, it's really precious. So make sure you're checking to see, is there a meetup or convention in your area where you could go and actually have like one-on-one -on -one conversations? And one thing I wanna say, again, I know that I'm harping on this this week, but especially when we're at a convention, it's so important. See what Gene said. He was inspired because of Pat's post. Yes. Right? If Pat wouldn't have posted that, he may not be in the same situation right now. So that's why it's so important to get on to this video today. Make sure you're leaving comments. Get onto the Facebook group. Put comments up. How's your day going? Hey, I found this recipe. Hey, I found this deal. Because somebody else is gonna be out there and be like, oh, that's an awesome idea. Thank you so much. That motivated me. That's why it's important to do it. Okay, next one is from Hope. Hey, Hope. Hope said, just recently found your channel and I love it. Thanks. I've been doing keto for several years. This past year was a mess and I put on some weight. I've started the BBBE after watching your videos. I'm on day three and I feel great and I'm not eating as much as I thought I would. That's how we feel. Really? I haven't eaten breakfast since starting this and I just haven't been hungry and that has never happened before. It is so freeing. I was just talking to somebody today just saying like, I really feel free. Just knowing that I can eat whenever I want as much as I want of these particular things, it really is comforting even in the midst of things that I crave. So even though we're walking around and seeing all of this delicious keto food that I'm completely able to try if I would like, the fact that I can eat as much as I want is, is still helping me on this challenge. I feel very motivated, but it's strange because you think you're going to eat way more than you actually eat. Yeah. You get full. It's We're just not hungry a lot of the times, and sometimes we are hungry. And that's one of the things that has been freeing about this. It's not that we are, for example, against intermittent fasting. I think intermittent fasting is an incredible yeah. tool. But we got to the point where you couldn't be successful, or at least we thought, because this is how some people push things, that you cannot be successful without intermittent fasting. And what we're finding is that's just not true. Yeah. If you want to intermittent fast, that's great. Now, I still believe that you should vary it up because our body is an amazing machine. And the one thing I'm noticing, the more that we experiment on ourselves, is our body does not like routine. No. When you get into it a routine, up quick. your body is like, yeah, I don't like it. It's like Bronson talks about, don't use muscles. Your body's like, fine. You're not going to use me. I'm just going to wither away. Right. So that's why you've got to walk a certain way. And if you if you kind of hunch over, now you're not using those muscles. The next thing you know, you can't come up because you those muscles have gotten so weak. It's the same thing with the way we eat. I think it's important to use our fasting muscles. I just don't think we need to do it every day. Listen to your body. If your body tells you today, hey, you're hungry for breakfast at 9 o'clock, then eat breakfast. Don't go by wait a second, my watch yes. says I'm not allowed to eat because the second we get into that, we become a slave to a diet and that isn't sustainable. Well, and I like knowing, am I actually full and also disconnecting for some stuff. So, you know, back when we were at Universal Studios, I don't drink a lot of Diet Coke, but when we go to the park, we have a, a, um, a glass that has got free refills. So we drink it then because it's cheaper for me to get that than a bottle yeah, of water. Yeah, because a bottle of water is like five bucks. So that I am so just accustomed 
to drinking soda in the park that as we walk through the turnstiles of Universal Studios this last time with Anthony, I'm like, I want Diet Coke. Right. I don't really want Diet Coke. I am just used to getting Diet Coke after going through the turnstiles. It's like a learned behavior. So right. I have to decide, do I want to really make choices for myself or do I want to live like Pavlov's dog right. and I am just used to this behavior and I've learned it good. And it's like we talk about with fasting. So when, when you eat the same time every single day, your hormones kick in. So for example, let's say you eat at five o'clock every day. Well, at five o'clock, your hormones are gonna be like, time to eat. Whether you're hungry or not. If you eat at 4.30, okay, and then finish eating at 4.15, at five o'clock, your hormones are gonna tell you, hey, time to eat. Yeah. But that's not gonna happen necessarily if you are constantly changing it up. If one day you eat at five, one day you eat at three, and one day you eat at six, if it's possible to do that. Same thing with intermittent fasting. If one day you fast for 16 hours and one day you fast for 20 hours and one day you don't fast at all, your body never knows what's coming. So it's able to kind of switch it up for you. Uh, next one is from Brianna. Hey Brianna. Brianna said, I go to cardiac rehab three days a week, every Wednesday, and we get an education. <laughs> I've learned all about how salt is bad and it causes high blood pressure. Weight loss is all about calories in versus calories out. And make sure to not eat red meat. Okay. I just keep my mouth shut, but it's kind of painful to listen to. Yeah. Believe me, I understand. The nurses are sweet ladies and they think that they are doing good. Oh, and if you're diabetic and your blood sugar is lower than 90, they make sure you eat a snack before you leave. Oh, I really want to say bravo for keeping your mouth shut because that would, I couldn't, that would be really, really challenging, but I totally get, it. I know why you're, you're not saying anything because it's not going to do any good until they discover the truth for themselves. And right now they are doing it with like good intentions. They just have wrong information, right? The best way to get through to them is if Dr. Barry says, just keep doing what you're doing and let the results speak for themselves. And eventually they're going to wake up and go like, wait a second. Yeah. Your A1C went from a 15.8 to a 5.8 and you're not on medication. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what's going on? Because as he said, there's no medication, none. He actually said on our last stream, he said, there is no medication that can do that. None you're going to wake up the doctor. So if they know how you're eating and you just listen to them yeah. and they continue to see your results and, and your, your labs are improving and you know, your cholesterol is, is where it should be, especially your triglycerides and your remnant. We're not going to talk about the other cholesterol because that doesn't mean much. Um, eventually they're going to be like, wait a second. There's something to this keto thing. Well, what they're going to say first is, oh my gosh, you look amazing and your lab work looks fantastic. So I guess you are not eating red meat. You are eating a bunch of snacks. You are making sure that you have a, a little sugar packet and you can look at them and be like, no, I'm not doing any of those right. things. I'm doing the complete up. <laughs> I don't understand that giving a snack to a diabetic with a glucose of 90, that would be a good glucose. Yeah. Right? Diabetics usually have elevated glucose. So why are we making, oh, wait a second. Your your glucose is too low. Let's, let's give you a snack let's give you a bump let's let's make sure you have high blue blood sugar still next one is from pat hey pat pat said what an amazing takeaway from bbbe any snacking needs to be protein and if you want a keto treat it's along with a meal and that's what people are asking us yeah. like what are you going to do when you're done with bbbe because it's not a permanent thing we never meant it to be even dr barry said this is a reset so are we going to incorporate things like, you know, keto bars or NOLA bars? Are we going to reincorporate keto chow? Um, my favorite ones, the Good Lovin' Bars, which yeah. we just got a discount code. There's a link down below Those for so them. Good. They're amazing with super low, super low, you total know, carbs. total carbs. Well, the thing about it is we're going to reintroduce that stuff, but I'm going to put it in this place. If I'm hungry and I want a snack during the day... I'm going to have some beef jerky. I'm going to have some eggs. I'm going to have some kind of high protein food. If I just want some kind of a desserty thing with my dinner, that's when I'm going to have that. Right. So if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat protein. I'm going to eat a whole food. If I just want an extra thing with my dinner, that's where I'm going to incorporate that kind of stuff. And we're not going to fill all of the hours in between with like Diet Coke. Right. I'm not just going to use like flavored beverages as a bridge between meals as if I'm telling myself 
drink this you don't get to eat yet right because i think that that is that's a problem yeah and that's why dr barry said if you want a zevia best time to have it during a meal this way if you do have any kind of sensitivity to the stevia as far as it possibly having a cephalic insulin response which is not in everybody you don't have to worry about it if you're having it with your meal because you're already going to elevate your insulin when you have your meal even with protein and fat so yeah that's that's the best takeaway that we've gotten is if you're hungry if you want a snack eat protein and eat your snacks with a meal uh next one is from carrie hey carrie carrie said i did see the video for the meat pizza which is the pizza I'll link for that up here. It's a really cringy video, but it's a really good recipe. <laughs> uh, and I want to make that now since it would be much easier for me to make. Just wonder if I can eat the whole thing, would that be a bad thing to eat? Go for it. No, it would be a great thing to eat. So if you don't know what a pizza is, it's basically you take ground beef, mix it with a little bit of egg, some Parmesan cheese, and you put it in a pan and you're going to bake it in your oven. So you're basically eating a pound of ground beef. Mm-hmm. And then when you're done, you're gonna take it out and put some pizza toppings, a little bit of tomato sauce, put some cheese, put some pepperoni, some bait, whatever you want on there, put it back in there till the cheese melts. Have at it, you're eating carnivore. It's delicious too. Right, I mean, that's that's pretty much like the BBB challenge, but it's just a carnivore challenge. You're eating one or two carbs that may be in the cheese, but that's it, that's super clean eating. If you can eat the whole thing, have at it. Uh, next one is from Zena. Hey, Zena. Zena said, I have a question. So when you do the carnivore diet, I noticed that you mentioned you can have coffee. So do you have to drink the coffee black or can you use a little stevia and creamer? Right now, I'm just drinking the coffee black and I'm finding that I actually like the taste of coffee. In the past, I think I liked the taste of cream and sugar that was flavored with a little bit of coffee. Right. So I think that as we come out of this in November, maybe once in a while, I'll add a little bit of flavoring or something to it. But um, I'm enjoying the black coffee again. Yeah. Now, that's what we're doing for BBBE, where the, the only thing we can really add to our coffee is egg or butter, which we do occasionally. Sometimes Rachel drinks the black, sometimes we're adding butter. If you just want to talk about carnivore, it depends on how strict with carnivore you want to be. Yeah. First of all, heavy cream, regardless of what some of the gurus who are inside of Facebook groups, and I don't mean necessarily YouTubers, I mean people who have been doing keto or carnivore for three months and they think they know 10 times more than Dr. Barry does. Right. Um, heavy whipping cream is carnivore. Okay, let's get from a Heavy whipping cream is carnivore. Why? Cow. It came from butter yeah. or it came from a cow and you have the cow gives you milk, gives you heavy whipping cream, which you can turn into butter. So if you can have butter, you can have heavy whipping cream. So that's first of all. So as far as the stevia, Dr. Barry put it great during our live stream. 98 or 99% is good enough. Yeah. Right? Let's, let's, I tell this to my officials when they say like, the ball should be here and you put it here, like it's an inch in the wrong spot. And my answer is, let's not be that good. Because otherwise you're gonna get what Kim Howerton calls like diet fatigue. Right. And then you're just gonna beat yourself up. So if you want your coffee and you need a few drops of stevia in there. Go for it. Go for it. Is it perfectly carnivore? No. But I, if, you're, if you're putting anything other than salt, on your food, you're not technically 100% carnivore anyway because pepper, not carnivore. Garlic, not carnivore. So don't worry about it if you need that little bit of stevia. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Debbie. Hey, Debbie. Debbie said, when doing BBB, can you still eat the protein sparing foods and bread? We do eat the, the we bread. We eat the bread. We don't put allulose in it. We, we use it without the allulose. Yeah, now again, here's what I wanna say. Make do BBE. I, I'm hesitant to say this because this could go in another whole direction with people. Make it yours. We talk about doing Rachel Keto, doing Joe Keto, doing Carrie Keto. Make it yours, but stick to the overall rules. Let's stick to what is the whole idea about this? 
eliminating pretty much everything that you're gonna binge on and keeping yourself at, as close to zero carbs as possible. Now there are carbs in eggs, but we're not talking about that. There's carbs in liver, but external carbs, no vegetable carbs, no sweeteners, that kind of stuff. So make it your way. So when we talked to Dr. Barry, Dr. Barry said you can have beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And then he said you can have some seasoning so long as there's zero carb. Now I, said to him, well, if I can have bacon, can I have any form of the pork? Right. And he said, I don't see why you can't have every form of the pork, except for don't put sauce on like it. Honey so, so like honey glazed ham. So like you can't have honey glazed ham. It's gotta be zero carb. Well, that's how we have done it. So for me, I have made the protein sparing modified fast bread without the allulose. So the only ingredients in that bread is egg whites, egg protein powder, which is simply egg whites, and then a little bit of cream of tartar, which is basically potassium. So right. nothing bad there. That's all, we're not putting any allulose, we're not putting anything else in there. If you go to the way Dr. Barry is currently doing with his Patreons, he said you can have beef, butter, bacon, and egg, but when he said beef, he said you can have any ruminant animal, whereas when he talked to us, he just said beef. So That's elk, why we haven't eaten sheep. elk or lamb or anything like that. But he has also said you can have bacon and only bacon. I'm gonna tell you, if you, either way you do it, you're gonna have results. You're having results the way we're doing it. Right. You're gonna have results the way he's doing it. But I would not venture out much past that. Why are we allowing ourselves to have the, the bread? Because it's just egg. Now on him, he's probably gonna tell you that's not nearly enough fat that's why we add so much butter to it. Well, and when you say like eat the PSMF type of food. Most of those foods are going to be off limits. Because you're going to lean to very lean meats. Right. So the first thing I think of is, no is, chicken. is chicken. So, you know, and especially when we're doing, you know, PSMF, what do you lean towards? Like chicken breast. Right. So it's like the leanest of the lean. So this is really designed to get us back in tune with the fat. And I right. think we need the fatty meats in order to see what is our lever. You right. know when you have eaten one slice of ribeye too much mm -hmm. because there is there is that delicious fat that goes with it. Well, you want some TMI? Yeah. So Dr. Barry the other day on his live stream. Do I want TMI? He was talking, somebody asked about going to the bathroom on BBE. And I chimed in that in th three weeks in now, we are the most regular we have ever been. Sorry that's to share not the, this. That's not the TMI. Some people have come to me and said, when I go carnivore, I can't go to the bathroom. You're probably not eating enough fat. Right. But as you do this, your body starts regulating and the fat just makes everything flow perfect. And if you overdo fat, over eat the fat, it really flows. It comes out. And I experienced that yesterday. I mean, I've been perfect, but we went out to Fogo de Chao. And we ate, and I ate a lot of fatty fat. meat. Same here. And it hit me within an hour. Yeah. Do I feel bad? No. no. But it was my body going, okay, I got all this we extra fat. We don't need fat. all this. <laughs> Let's just get rid of it. And that's what this has done. It's really helped us to get in tune with our body. The problem with a lot of the PSMF recipes, they're gonna have things you're not allowed to have on beef, butter, bacon, egg. Beef, butter, bacon, egg is no chicken. Okay, it's you're not, ch no chicken, no fish. It's beef or any ruminant animal, butter, which means no heavy whipping cream. Why no heavy whipping cream? Because there's carbs in heavy whipping cream because all heavy whipping cream has carbs. It does. No, no matter what the label says. Uh, then you can have bacon or even if you want to extend it to, to all pork, and eggs, that's it. There, There is no other food. So there's not many recipes you're gonna make. Again, you can have some seasonings, but it's, you can't overdo garlic because there's carbs. It's frustrating to me because my first thing is, I've got a clarifying question. I'd like to add this extra thing and it's just like not the room for negotiation right. like there is when we talk about things like keto, ketovore, carnivore, because there's there there's a lot of looseness in there where you can kind of define it yourself. But when someone says beef, butter, bacon, eggs, it's pretty it's clear. Like, it's so clear. Right. But sometimes my um my addiction, right, my carb addiction will try to ask questions that this BBB and E challenge just cuts off. Like, no, you can't have that, Rachel. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll come back with all of our Facebook comments.
Well, we still haven't won anything yet. Maybe we'll try later. Not time to quit our jobs just yet, baby. Welcome back. Now, but I did want to mention before we get into our Facebook comments, and I'm very upset that these are being released in the middle of our BBBE. Was this a plan? But uh, Perfect Keto, today is the launch day, if you're watching this on Monday, for their Mallow Munch Bars. We did try these before. We tried these pre this challenge. We had actually tried them. And they've got three flavors of these things. These things are delicious. Yeah. They have a chocolate flavor, they have a peanut butter flavor, and they have a regular marshmallow flavor. And they are really good. If you like the Rice Krispies treats, right. these are like on par. It just seems very unfair that they're out right now. Yeah. And so they're having a launch special right now. I'm going to leave all the details down below where you can get a discount on buying some. So I'm going to put all the codes and everything down below. If you use that link, you'll get a discount on it. You'll also help support the channel, which we greatly appreciate. Uh, let's get into our Facebook comments. The first one is going to be from Brianna. Hey, Brianna. Brianna said, I was invited to this group by a dear friend who has had success with the keto carnivore Aww. diet. I'm currently the heaviest weight I've ever been in my life at 208. Prior to having my daughter in June of 2019, I weighed 150. Since having her, I've been unable to lose any weight. Period. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. How on earth do you transition carbs from your diet? I am and always have been obsessed with breads and pastas. I feel you, Brianna. First of all, welcome to the group. We're so excited that you're here. And I'm so excited for friends that care about us enough to try to connect us with the support that we need. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you as somebody who prior to keto, I was in your boat. I, bread and pasta, my favorite two things. I would eat pasta almost every day. We lived on ramen noodles practically. Right. Um, bread pretty much every day, bread and cheese. And this was an addition to my food. Like I would get a loaf of bread. I'd literally take a loaf of bread, like three slices, put two slices of American cheese, put another slice on top, two more slices, and stick it in the microwave. It's probably the most disgusting grilled cheese you're ever going to eat. It's not even grilled. But I ate it every single day as a snack. Mm -hmm. So I understand... I mean, I would go to Outback Steakhouse, that the, that bread, I wanted like five loaves. Some of it's going to come down to willpower. Yeah, you it, can do this. You can do this. You just have to keep in mind that those cravings will subside if you give it long enough. Yeah, and remember this. There are things that you can eat on keto that a lot of people on the standard American diet are going to say, you can't have that. Yeah. Like, what kind of food do you, do you like bacon? Then eat all the, every time you think I want a piece of bread, go eat bacon. Right. That, that's my suggestion. Another suggestion, and I know that I'm going to get some hate down in the comments for this. Oh no. But if you are a bread addict, like I was, I'm going to tell you the worst thing that you can do as you're beginning your transition into the keto and carnivore lifestyle is eat keto bread substitutes. Yep. And I know, before everybody starts typing down below, that's the stupidest recommendation ever. Hear me out. Number one, it's not the same thing. Right. I so love Maria Emmerich's bread. But again, I haven't eaten bread in four years. Okay? It's egg white. Is it anything like white bread? No. Is it a great carrier? Yes. But if you're coming off of having a bread addiction, which I've been there, you're going to be like, this isn't the same thing and I want my regular bread back. Yeah, you will. Second of all, I've been on keto for four years. I literally have not had any kind of regular bread for four years. The whole craving for bread for me is gone. So having Maria Emmerich's bread, because it isn't like regular bread, doesn't trigger me to want to go back to Outback Steakhouse. Right. But if you're brand new... It will. It's going to trigger you, especially it's not the same. Even if you go buy... The store-bought keto breads, which are not really good for you. They've got wheat in them when they're going to cause inflammation. Whether or not they kick you out of ketosis or not, they're not going to be optimal for your health. The best thing to do is go cold turkey and replace the bread with something that you really like on keto. You want a mug cake? Go make a mug cake. You want bacon? Go eat. Every time you treat want that yourself. bread, treat yourself with something that's good on keto. You want to treat yourself to a really good cut of meat instead of being like, you know, settling for something. When If you like ribeye, don't go buy sirloin. Get, get yourself a ribeye and say, as I'm transitioning, I'm going to console myself with something really super delicious that I'm going to enjoy. Now, I also highly recommend you check out our guide to starting keto. I'm going to leave a link for that up here. And especially if you're just coming in, 
just start off the first couple of weeks, dump the sugar and dump the bread and the pasta and eat as much of all of the other stuff that you want. If you want five pounds of ground beef for lunch, go for it. Eat five pounds of ground beef. Eat as many times a day you want. Don't try to jump into this with, I'm allowed this many calories, this many grams of fat, this many grams of protein. I'm only allowed to eat one time a day. You don't want to do any of that stuff. These first couple weeks, it's hard enough to ditch sugar and ditch you know, uh, all of the breads and stuff. Let's not try to do everything. As I continue to say, Sugar is the most difficult addiction to give up. I firmly believe that. We've had people actually who were addicts say that they're having a harder time with sugar. So let's not try to complicate it with give up sugar, give up bread, and do all these other things. All of that stuff will come. Uh, next one is from Nicolette. Hey, Nicolette. Nicolette said, I'm dealing with some post-COVID hair fallout. I've heard that collagen could help. Uh, with that, but I've watched a bit of Dr. Barry's video that said store-bought stuff is no good. Any advice? I definitely saw the ball start to roll when I started using the Perfect Keto Collagen. Mm -hmm. It was like a good beginning to that. And it was something I would add in, would add into my coffee instead of like a keto creamer that was just sweet but really not doing any work. Right. Um, I, then I decided that I liked the, the collagen with just water. Right. And that, that tasted really good. I didn't even need it to be in the coffee. So I, I drank it like that. Since we've been on the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge, I haven't been able to do any of that because it has a sweetener in it. And actually, I am having tremendous like growth in my hair just from eating the regular protein. Right. So what I was going to say is, Rachel, if you look at some of our videos from two years ago, There's a reason why ago, I had short hair. Um... Her hair was always, we always try to color really dark to kind of hide bald spots. And I remember, because I was the one who colored her hair, she would make me rub the coloring into her scalp because she's like, I want you to basically dye my scalp so nobody can see my bald I spots. I can't even imagine what I was so doing thin. to my brain. But, well, the collagen, if you use a good one, you've got to find a company that's got good quality collagen. Will it help? Yes. But not if you're under eating protein. Right. If you're under eating, the, step one up your protein okay? yeah nobody should be eating less than 100 grams of protein you know for a while everybody demonized protein in keto there was this there were there were a couple of people out there in the social world who were saying you need to eat like no more than four to six ounces of protein and the problem was we were under eating protein and what happens you get muscle loss and your hair falls out and you, your bone density goes down yeah you need protein you know like if you if you want to weigh 140 pounds you should be eating 140 grams of protein minimum per day you're not going to be able to overeat your protein so eat your protein that's going to help if you're eating a steak chew on the fat chew on that gristle there's collagen in there and then supplement with some collagen but don't just try to, if, if you're eating 50 grams of protein and then having a collagen you're still going to have some hair problems yeah you you we've got to get ourselves nutritionally balanced and that's what happens, even not on keto. People start, any anybody I've ever known who starts any diet, even if you go get some kind of gastric surgery or the sleeve or you go on Weight Watchers, when we calorie restrict, we start losing our hair and we start losing other things because why? We're minerally deficient, we're vitamin deficient, we're protein deficient because we're under eating. Look at the one-to-one. -one. It's going to be the best thing. Get all your protein in. If you want to supplement with a little bit of delicious collagen, there's a coupon code for Perfect Keto down below. But the best place to start is getting your collagen yeah. and eating good, healthy protein. Next one's from Barbara. Hey, Barbara. Barbara said, so I just started this last Saturday. I feel good, but I'm so scared. You know the shocking expression on people's faces when you tell them what you're doing? I'm yeah. talking family members here. They think this is a recipe for disaster. I need to lose about 150 pounds, and in my heart, I feel confident though. I had gestational diabetes while pregnant with my daughter, and I had a glucose meter, and if I had listened and followed the guidelines and meal plans given out at the doctor's office, I would have been on insulin. Oh, yeah. When I ate eggs and bacon or sausage for breakfast, it was nice and low. Oatmeal, it shot up. Yep. Pasta was bad too. So with that experience, you think I would be more confident. Well, I know what you're going through though. It's really hard because you love these people and these people love you. Right. And so when they're giving you an advice of some sort, you want to 
to take what they're, they're recommending under advisement. But at the same time, you know your body. As much as they love you, they're not living on the inside of you. And you know how you feel and what makes you feel a certain way. And yeah, take that, the, the past that you had that you're like, okay, I knew what worked back then. And just use that to build your confidence as you move forward. Cause you're doing the right thing. They will see it in time. And you know, just tell them what you tell yourself, which is I've got to trust the process. So one thing I'm going to say, it's going to be a little bit opposite. Don't tell them what you're doing. Aww. Don't tell them what people ask you. What you don't use the word keto. Don't use the word carnivore. Say, you know what? I'm shopping the outer aisle. You know what? I'm cutting out pasta, grains, and sugar. Nobody's going to complain about that. That's why Dr. Barry used the term proper human diet. What are you doing? I'm eating the proper human diet. Nobody can argue with that. Who's going to argue with that? As far as worrying about yourself, You've got to listen to your body and trust yourself. If you don't think that this is good for you, then don't do it. Yeah. If you think it's good for you, but everybody else is telling you it's not, maybe don't listen to them and jump into our family group. Right. Jump into people who are going to money. That's why we started our family group. We had family members tell us that this was bad for you. We had family members tell us it's not going to be sustainable. We had family members that when we lost all the weight and friends tell us, great, you lost all the weight, but it'll be back on in six months. Yeah, and it's challenging. And I know that we're going into the holiday season. So sometimes just not telling them isn't going to work because they're going to see you eating. And while you're out eating together or you're having a family meal together, they notice what you're doing. And I think you know, it's good in that moment when you have one of those moments where, where you're eating as a family to just say like, hey, I totally know how you feel. I know I'm doing something that maybe you're not on board with, but you know what? This is family time right now, so let's not get hung up on the food. Let's just enjoy the conversation. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Pamela. Hey, Pamela. Pamela said, I'm a newbie and feeling overwhelmed by all the information. What is the best advice to give me? Keep it simple. Yeah. Like use the kiss method, but we won't say the last word, right? Um, go check out our guide to getting started, the five steps to getting started on keto. I'll leave a link. For, oh, we put a link earlier, but I'll leave a link also down in the description. Uh, again, as we said a little while ago, number one, start off with week one. Just stop eating sugar, stop eating pasta, stop eating grains. Don't worry about anything else. Yeah. We're going to work you into it. Step three, we talk about figuring out your macros. There's nothing easier than one to one. How much do you want to weigh at the end? Okay. What is your, what is your ridiculous goal weight? Your dream goal weight? What is your model goal weight? Mm -hmm. Or if you're a guy, what is your you know, GQ cover model. Yeah, yeah. What what weight would be just you don't think you're ever going to achieve, but it would be really awesome. Like for me, 185 pounds. There you go. So Rachel, 140 pounds, there right? There you go. So what does that mean? Take that number and you're gonna go, I'm gonna eat 140 grams at least of protein a day. Where did I get that number? What's your goal weight? That's very simple. You can't get any easier than that. And how much fat can you can eat twenty to thirty grams of carbs a day? Total. Okay. Total. And then fat, you're going to take the 140 or whatever number you have. And then you su subtract 20 to 30 and that's how much fat. So we're going to use nice round numbers. 150, let's say I want to weigh 150 pounds, which I don't want to weigh 150 pounds, but, <laughs> but 150 pounds. So I'm going to eat 150 grams of, of protein, 120 to 130 grams of fat, and then 20 to 30 grams of carbs. So the carbs and the fat equal the protein. Nice and easy. Balance. Do you have to eat that much fat? No. You need to eat that much protein. The fat is a limit, but don't underdo it. We, we were eating like 150 grams of protein and like 75 grams of fat, and we slowed our metabolism down. Yeah, you need you the wanna fat. You want to get it one to one. Right. That's why we look at an egg, perfect ratio. It's one to one. A ribeye, perfect ratio, one to one. If you're eating, oh, ground beef, 80, 20 ground beef. Perfect ratio, one to one. So that so, keeps it simple. But it, all you need to do is eat that. If you're going to eat something really lean, like a piece of salmon or maybe venison, add in some fat, add some butter, add some tallow, add some ghee, add to some lard that one so to that one. you can bring that fat up. But if you want to just do like BBBE or eat carnivore, you don't have to measure anything because you you're not going to overeat it. Yeah, because you're just naturally picking one to one items. Yeah. Uh, next one is going to be from Oval. Hey, Oval. Oval said, I sort of stopped my BBE challenge yesterday after three weeks because I'm at a conference and I don't know what options I will have while there. 
I weighed and I measured myself and I lost five pounds, two inches overall. My blood glucose has averaged 86 when it was in the mid 120s. That's fantastic. Uh, when I got to my hotel, I found a grocery store and bought boiled eggs, chorizo sticks, and other stuff just in case. This morning at breakfast, I met a lady and I talked to her about keto and this challenge and the benefits I've experienced. Wow. I even told her about this wonderful 2KK family and she said she was going to check us out. I feel very thankful and blessed. Oh, well, thank you so much. And I'm so excited about your results. And and honestly, when people ask you like, what are you doing? The nicest thing that you could do is is share what you've done. Don't be afraid, you know, but just because In they're asking. In a loving, asking, kind way. Yeah, because they're thinking to themselves, there is no way that you're eating all of this delicious fatty feet, meat and like, fatty feet. Don't eat fatty feet. Um, fatty meat. And then having these wonderful results. So I'm so glad. Thanks for doing it with us, Oval. Uh, next one is from Robin. Hey, Robin. Robin said, I'm finally getting around to prepping the, to preparing to do the BBE challenge for at least a week or more, depending on the side effects. Can someone please point me to the very first post videos or info so I can figure out what to do? I've got a copy of what's allowed to eat. I need to know what supplements I might need. Can I still do intermittent fasting and eat two meals a day and so on? Any help will be greatly appreciated. I also would like to find the recipe for the mayo. Um, I'll be baking the bread on Sunday. Thanks so much for any help you can give. Best thing to do is check out the entire playlist that we have for beef, butter, bacon, eggs. We tell you exactly what we're doing on day one. Link for that playlist is up here. The mayo, I still have not written a recipe to put on our website, but I don't remember what day it is, but if you go through the playlist, you'll see it was actually titled Making Butter Mayo. Yeah. Uh, the rules are pretty simple. Eat beef, butter, bacon, eggs. Beef can be any ruminant animal. For us, we did pork, uh, bacon, any kind of pork. Uh, very limited on spices. If you're going to have spices, make sure they're zero carb um, and don't eat a lot of them unless you're just having like Redmond seasoned salt or, you know, Redmond salt. And you can have some pepper. You can have mustard. Intermittent fasting, you don't need to. If you want to, fine, but, but you're going to just listen to your body. That's the whole point of this. Listen to your body. And I would say open yourself up to not doing intermittent fasting. And that was a very scary aspect of this challenge for me. Like, I was very afraid at the thought of not just omadding or at the most two meals a day and like, what are you talking about where I could eat at any time? It's only been a couple of hours since I ate, you know, but you're eating the right foods and you're going to still have amazing results. So don't, don't worry about the intermittent. The key is so don't, don't set your eating by your watch. Yeah. Let your, the whole point is we're getting in tune with our body. You, you, that's why we've documented everything we've done. We're showing you everything we eat. We're, we're showing you our meals. Some people don't want to see us eat. We're showing you for a reason because we want to, we're going to, today we're going to eat breakfast. Tomorrow we're not. It, are we putting on a schedule? We have breakfast today and here we don't know. Sometimes we've woken up. I want breakfast today. There's times I've gotten home. We're supposed to have dinner at five o'clock and Rachel said to me, I'm just not hungry. And I look at her and go, who, who are, are you? you? <laughs> right? So it's, we're listening to our body Where's and that's what this is doing. You're, you're getting in touch with your body and your body is going to tell you when you need to eat. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Jen. Hey Jen. Jen said, Hey Joe, how do you find a farm to buy your own cow from? I'm trying to Google different things to find somewhere to buy me and not having much luck. Doesn't help that there is an ice cream chain called Comfy Cow in Louisville. <laughs> Thanks for any tips you can give. So there is a website. I'm going to leave a link for it down below. It's called eatwild.com. And it's basically got a list of a lot of, I'm not going to say all, but a lot what? of the local farms throughout the country. It pulls up a map. And on the map, you're simply going to click what state you are. And then it'll, you know, you. it'll give you a connection with all these different farms. Some of them have websites. Some of them don't. It's got the details on there. You can call them. And that's how we found the one that we're dealing with. Okay, so I think we have one more, and it is from Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Sharon said, today is day 22 of BBBE Challenge. Go. Uh, after grabbing the wrong pair of jeans from my closet and finding they fit, plus no muffin oh. top, I'm now going for a full <laughs> 90 days. That will motivate you. Met with the devil, the scale. Yeah. And there is a bit less from what he says, but things are in different places. That's for sure. Yeah. My energy level is off the charts. The cravings are gone. The swollen ankles and feet are gone. Sleep is much better. And each day is much easier than the last. Eating when I'm hungry and not being driven by hunger yes. is an amazing feeling. 
Seeing the physical difference is so motivating and I want to keep this going. So 90 days, here I come. Sharon, thank you so much for sharing your experience because sometimes, you know, when we're talking about it, it's like, you know, okay, well that's just Joe and Rachel's perspective. Is there anybody else that's having similar results or are we some sort of enigma? So mm -hmm. I really love hearing that. I particularly love hearing what you said about sleep because man, I meet so many people that talk about their insomnia and they just wish there was some way that they could get better rest. They know their body needs it. They know that that is causing a plateau. There's so much frustration. It's causing aggravation and stress, you know, the following day because they're not getting good rest. We are getting incredible sleep. And we're not taking anything right That's now. Right. It really is all of the food that we're eating. Yep. So that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. We thank you guys so much for joining us. Now, don't forget, this coming Thursday, we will be back to our live stream. It's going to be at 8.30 p.m. I don't know what I'm wearing. Eastern time. Just warning. Oh. We're getting closer oh. to Halloween. Uh, we will be getting back into town Tuesday afternoons. So we'll, we'll resume our regular vlogs Wednesday morning. We're really excited. We're going to take this all the way to October Let's 31st. Let's do it. First. Uh, again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. If you are a Patreon member or a channel member, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts we really for you. You know, supporting us. If you are using the links down below, thank you thank very you. much. If you're simply watching our videos, we're so thank glad you you're here. Very much. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next week. Bye. Bye.